channel. For those of you who don't know me or if you've never been here before, welcome. My name's Rachel and I'm the owner and creator here at the Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Happy Friday, I hope you've had a great week so far. Uh, for today's video, I have a thrift flip for you. And in today's video, I am highlighting a product that is new to me. It is a beautiful decoupage paper by Roy Cycle Treasures. Now I have seen her papers used by many creators online uh, to make some fantastic projects and I was really excited to be gifted a piece of her paper to try by a friend of mine and so that is what I did in today's video. So I created a vignette based on um, the piece of decoupage paper that I was given. I hope you like the video, and if you do, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. And if you're new here and you haven't yet, I would love it if you think about subscribing to my channel and then just hit that little notification bell so you don't miss anything. Also, for Tuesday's video, I am going to have a little announcement at the end of uh, the video, so please stay tuned for that. Uh, and without further ado, let's get to today's project. A while back, I was gifted this beautiful piece of decoupage paper by a friend of mine, and this is new to me. It's a paper by Roy Cycled called Sepia Blossoms. I've never used her papers before, so I thought today was the perfect day to do that. I pulled some colors that I thought would blend well with that beautiful paper, uh, and that includes DIY's Little Black Dress, Prairie Gray, Faded Burlap, Crinoline, and cake batter. So those are the colors that I'm going to be using to create my vignette. So for my first project, I'm going to be using Prairie Gray on this cute little set of ceramic owls. You can't really see it, but there's a crack in the top of them. And so I decided to go ahead and paint them. Now I started off by taking them outside and giving them one good even coat of uh, Rust-Oleum 2X in dark brown, just so that when I distressed, I would go back to the dark brown. So then I'm following that up with two good even coats of the Prairie Gray, which I pounced on or stippled on with my brush just to avoid any brush stroke or brush marks in the paint. And then I'm going in once that paint is completely dry with my damp shop towel and just simply wet distressing these owls. This is a really simple makeover. Um, I really didn't want to do too much to them. I thought they were really pretty the way they were. Once they were dry, I went in with my DIY clear wax and I am using my soft bristle, bristle brush to just simply brush on that wax and then a shop towel to wipe back any excess. Again, a really, really easy makeover for these little owls, and I think they're super adorable. The next pieces in my vignette are these two canning jars that I've had sitting around on my shelf for quite a while now. And I am just going in really easily with some paint uh, to spruce these guys up and make them fit into my vignette. So I'm using crinoline on one, which is the beautiful cream color, and faded burlap on the other, which is this beautiful muted uh, beigey color. And I am again stippling that paint onto the jars just because I'm not a huge fan of brush stroke marks in my paint. And it did take a second because I had to um, paint half of them, let them dry, and then pick them up and paint the other half of the jar. And of course, they each required two good even coats of paint. So once that was finished and I was finally able to set them aside for their final dry, uh, then I went in with my damp shop towel and began the process of wet distressing these. Now, I know I've told you guys before, but DIY, DIY paint can be reactivated with water, which is what I'm doing here. Um, it's a simple, easy, mess-free way to distress your pieces uh, without the use of sandpaper. So you just wet your paper towel or a rag or whatever and go over the areas that you want to be seen through the paint. So I'm just going over uh, the words and the little measurements on the side and that cute little um, fruit uh, picture in the back so that they are more visible through the paint. 
Once that's done and the paint is dry again, I am sealing these with DIY's Big Top. I like Big Top for this because it's a nice durable sealer. And since these are glass and, uh, you know, if they get cracked together or um, scratched at all, a Big Top will definitely help protect them. So just one good even coat of the big top. I had to, again, do the bottom part and then wait for that to dry so I could pick it up and do the top of these jars. In my head, I thought that this was going to be the last step for these jars, but I really thought they were kind of plain when I finished them. So I decided to take some of the leftover strips of flour sack cloth that I had um, stained with coffee not too long ago. And I just took one and tied it half in like a half a knot um, and then took some more flour sack cloth strips and laid those across that half knot and then finish the knot over them. I tried putting them all around together but the knot was so huge that it looked way too bulky and this seems like a good solution for that. So then I just tie my knot really tight, flip them all back down, kind of floof them out just a little bit and move them to where I want them and then cut off the excess and then these jars are finally finished and I love the way they came out. To add some height to my vignette, I grabbed these two pillar holders. I've had these sitting around for a little while. And of course, as you saw, they were a very shiny, shiny silver, uh, which would not go with the paper. And so I took them outside, gave them each to a good even coat of Rust-Oleum 2X dark brown spray paint. And then once that was dry, I brought them in and began painting with DIY's crinoline. And the reason I did the dark brown underneath the crinoline is because I really wanted to distress these and I felt like the dark brown was a good base color to distress back to. So these each got two good even coats of paint. And for these, I don't mind the brush strokes as much. I just really try to keep going in the same direction with all of my brush marks so that when I wax, it just picks up that little bit of, of uh, texture. Once both my coats of paint are dry, I am moving on to distressing. Now, I know this look is not for everyone, and you could absolutely skip this step and move straight into waxing or sealing this paint at this point if that's the look you're going for. For me, I really, really like the kind of rustic farmhouse shabby chic look, and so that is what I'm going for with these candlesticks, and especially since they have so much beautiful texture and character. I really wanted to highlight that by showcasing some of that brown paint underneath the white. So that's what I'm doing here. Again, just with my damp shop towel, randomly picking little areas that I want to see that brown paint and then washing back the paint off of those areas. It's a really simple process. It brings out a lot of character in this piece and I really love how, the, how it looks. Once I'm done with my distressing and happy with how my candle holders look, it is time to seal my paint. This time I'm using DIY's clear wax. And the reason I picked wax instead of Big Top is that I really didn't want these guys to have any type of sheen to them, which Big Top definitely does have a little bit of a, a glossy sheen to it. And I wanted these to really feel kind of old and farmhouse. And for me, waxed kind of does that. And again, waxing is a pretty easy process. You just load up a really light layer of wax on the tip of your brush and lightly brush on the wax, making sure you get into all the nooks and crannies. One of the keys is to not get your brush too goopy. You don't want a ton of wax on the piece. And then just lightly brush that or wipe that back off with your shop towel, cheesecloth, uh, whatever you have handy. And remember, it takes about 24 hours for the wax to dry and then a good 30 days for it to cure completely. I really love how these turned out and I hope you do too.
The next part of my vignette is this cute little wooden carry box that I just picked up on my latest thrift thrift run. And the handle on this was old and kind of fallen apart. So I took that off and then I took sandpaper to the wording that was on the front. It was kind of chippy. Some of it was falling up off and I really didn't want to have any um, issues underneath my paint. So I sanded that smooth and then moved on to painting. So for this, I'm using DIY's cake batter, which is this beautiful yellow, and I'm going in and giving it two good even coats of the paint in the inside and on the outside. And I also painted the bottom of this box because it looked horrible as well. <laughs> so it got two good even coats everywhere except for the front. And I'm sure you can guess as to why that is. As you probably guessed, I am going to be putting the beautiful decoupage paper that I highlighted at the very beginning of the video on the front of this box. So I am going to paint the front only with two good even coats of DIY's White Swan. Now it isn't necessary to do a white coat of paint underneath your decoupage paper. You can put decoupage paper over whatever color you want. It just makes a little bit clearer, sharper image on the paper when you do go over white paint. One little tidbit that I learned from watching some of Royce's videos was that if you spritz the back of your paper, it alleviates any of the wrinkles that are caused by folding when shipping. So I took one good even coat of liquid patina by DIY and painted that on the front of the box and then very carefully laid my paper down on that. And this is me smoothing it out. Now I've heard if you take a ball of saran wrap, it makes the uh, smoothing process a lot easier, uh, but I just very carefully and gingerly used my hands and it worked just fine. Then I went over the front of the piece with another coat of liquid patina. And once that was completely dry, I am sanding off the excess with some 150 grit sandpaper, just using kind of a downward sweeping motion to remove that excess paper. Once that's done, it's time to seal the paint of the rest of the piece. And for that, I am using DIY's Big Top and just going over the entire piece with one good even coat of Big Top. I have to say that I absolutely love this cake batter color with this paper. Uh, I just think it's so pretty. So now the only thing left to do is replace my handle. And of course I thought I had a bigger piece of jute, which I didn't. So I ended up taking three strands of smaller jute and braiding them together, running them through the holes with a knot at one end and then knotting the other end, cutting off my excess. And then this little carry box is done. My final project for today's vignette is this big wooden tray that I've had for a little bit now. I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to use a big chunk of that beautiful, beautiful uh, decoupage paper. And I thought the color little black dress would be perfect with that paper. So I'm going in and I'm painting the outside and just the, in the sides of the inside with two good even coats of DIY's little black dress. As you can probably see, I painted the bottom of this piece as well, and I already sealed that up with some DIY big top just for a little bit of protection while I finish the rest of it. Once I was finished painting with the little black dress, I took a damp shop towel and just cleaned up a couple of places where I had gotten a little bit carried away with the black paint. Thankfully, this paint is water soluble, so it's easy to just wipe back off. 
Then it was on to painting the bottom of the tray. And for this, I'm using DIY's White Swan and very, very carefully going in, trying not to get any of that White Swan onto the black um, and just trying to create nice crisp lines uh, so that I have a great base for the decoupage paper. This definitely took a few minutes and I have to admit I did have to go back with a little bit of little black dress and clean up a couple spots but I finally got it all nice and perfect and ready for the next step. So I measured the bottom so that I knew how big of a piece of decoupage paper I needed, got that cut out, misted the back and got it laid down into my tray. Then I started in the far corner and just did a little bit of a strip with the liquid patina, laid the paper back down very, very gently, smoothed it out, and then worked my way across the very top of the piece, just doing one little starter strip on each one of the individual boards. Once I got that done and the paper smoothed down and had a good place to start, I was able to pull back the paper and then begin working my way down the tray. So I am just uh, putting a little strip of the liquid patina down all the way across the board, placing my paper down and smoothing it out as I go and just working my way down that board. So you can see here, I'm just doing three or four inches at a time with the liquid patina. And then again, just placing the paper down very, very carefully and gently uh, smoothing it out with my hands. Once it's all down and I can go back and uh, cover it with a good coat of liquid patina on the top, I did realize that the very, very corner didn't stick very well. And so I did have to lift that back up. It came up all right. I mean, this is a pretty darn durable paper. Um, I did tear it just a little bit in the very, very corner, but nothing that you can actually see. So I feel pretty good about um, how this looks. So see there, I just had to put a little bit more liquid patina down under that corner. I did have a little bit of overhang, um, so I had to take my razor blade and when I was cutting the uh, in between the boards, I took my razor blade and also cut off a little bit of um, the excess paper that was in the bottom. Then it was on to sanding away the excess paper. This was a little bit tricky just because um, I had to sand right up to that edge and try and remove that paper uh, without tearing it. And so it, I just had to be very, very careful and slow um, and try not to rip the paper at all as I was doing this. It came off pretty well. I do have to admit that I, <laughs> I did have to go back in with, again, some more little black dress because there were a couple spots where I caught the black paint underneath and accidentally sanded it down so you could see the white. So I had to um, do a little bit of touch up, but no big deal. Once I was done with my touch-ups, it was time to seal my paint. Now I did go ahead and put a coat of Big Top over uh, the bottom of this tray, even though it already had a coat of liquid patina, just for some added durability. I worried that if somebody uses this as a tray and a dish or a utensil goes sliding across it, I didn't want it to damage the paper. So then I finished off by giving the entire uh, piece one good Good even coat of DIY's big top and then this big tray is finally finished.
video. I hope you liked it. And again, if you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I so appreciate that. Just a little reminder too, that any of the products you saw me use today can be purchased through my website at www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com. I have been working to build up my inventory, so everything on there should be in stock at the moment. Uh, and then if you're new here and you haven't already, I would love it if you think about subscribing to my channel and then just hit that little notification bell so you don't miss anything. Tuesday's video, I said I had an announcement and I do. I have a brand new product that I'm going to be offering here in my cottage. Uh, it will eventually be available online as well. I have a couple shipping, shipping issues I need to work through first though. Uh, but for Tuesday, I'm going to be doing an unboxing and showing you all of the beautiful new products that I am going to be carrying here. So I really hope you'll join me for that. It should be fun. I'm also hoping to have at least one little project done with one of the new products so I can kind of show you uh, what they look like when they're actually used. So um, again, I hope you'll join me for that. I hope you have a great weekend and I thank you so much for being here. I'll see you Tuesday. Bye.